Please say the prayer. हमें अपने मन को हमेशा संतुलित रखना है इसी में हमारा आत्मविकास समाया हुआ है वै मे सर्व मो मो आत्मनि मे मो 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 मारे स्मारे ओ मो मो चिन्मय मो मो स्थम केवल मो 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 हराणी शुद्ध मो मो so in past uh, four sutras we saw how yoga works and when somebody undertakes the path of yoga and he puts the right kind of prescribed uh, effort then what kind of changes take place in his personality in his mind in his thinking in his capacities in his understanding and in what way he changes this we saw in last four shloka four sutras and in that the changes which were there they were termed as nirodha parinam samadhi parinam and avastha parinam so these three changes were taking place in the same chitta that is what we have discussed earlier now we will look at the description of these changes what is nirodha parinama what happens exactly but then it is in relation to everything now earlier what was being talked about it was chitta now everything is being talked about chitta along with the various objects which are there so today sutra reads etena भूतेन्द्रियु धर्म लक्षण अवस्था परिणाम व्याख्याता तो एतेन वर्ड इज रिफरिंग टू द पास थ्री चेंजेस विच वी डिस्कस विरोध परिणाम समाधि परिणाम एंड एकाग्रता परिणाम दिस इज वॉट वी डिस्कस अर्लियर सो दिस वर्ड एतेन हियर इज रिफरिंग टू दो चेंजेस सो एतेन भूतेन्द्रियु so from this or from what has been discussed etena means whatever has been discussed from that we can now understand that three more changes which take place in the bhutas and indriyas are being explained or have been explained and what are these three changes dharma lakshan and avastha parinam so if we look at the translation in hindi इससे इस परिणाम भेद से भूतों तथा इंद्रियों के धर्म लक्षण अवस्था नामक परिणाम व्याख्यात हुए हैं 
English translation of the sutra would be, by these are explained the three changes, namely of essential attributes, of characteristics, of temporal character, and of the state of Bhutas and Indriyas. So this is what this sutra says. Now, obviously, as I'm speaking to you, some of you may be not able to make a head or tail of, out of what is being said, because this sutra is very, very technical in nature. And our understanding of how yoga works, or even this chapter, which is known as Vibhuti Par, this will be understandable if we understand these three parinamas which have been talked about. So now let us try to simplify it and try to understand what is meant by these dharma, lakshana and avastha parinama. So we have been talking about changes in last uh, two, three sessions continuously. We have been talking about changes. Changes are taking place in our personality all the time. Our bodies are changing. Our minds are changing. Our thoughts are changing. Our even the uh, you know values are changing, our way of looking at things, perceptions are changing, our understanding is changing. And then same kind of changes we see in the world. World is also all the time changing. <clears throat> so the only constant which is there in the world is change. Every moment, some or the other things are changing. And last time I was telling you that uh, one will be surprised and one will be shocked to realize that the moment which we are living just now, at present, this moment may never be repeated in the entire eternity. It may appear as a shocking thing. It may appear as a very, very big statement. Whatever is now at this moment may not be repeated in eternity. Because why? Because there are billions and billions of factors which are working in the universe. So as we are speaking, as I'm speaking to you, as you are understanding, things, things are changing in the universe. And the change which is taking place, it is never going to be the same in what is there in this moment. This moment is unique in the universe. And this moment may never be repeated again. And so many variables are there in the universe. So it is at the, you know, at a very great scale, the changes are taking place. And our mind is very tiny. Our mind is not able to grasp all the changes. And moreover, our minds are not trained to be able to understand and discern the changes. So how, but then one thing is there that we know the world, we interact with the world. And only through these changes, we come to know that, you know, things are moving or things are changing. Because all the time changes are taking place. So suppose if you meet a friend, after a gap of three or four months, then you suddenly notice a lot of changes in that frame. And you may, you know, exclaim or you may uh, shout, oh my God, you have put on so much weight. Or you may say, my God, you have lost so much weight, you are looking very thin. Now, why you are able to notice this change? Because a gap has been there and suddenly you are seeing some new features in that person which were not there earlier, which were not in, which are not in your memory. So suddenly you notice certain new characteristics in the person and then you say, you see, this is the characteristics I'm seeing in you. Now, this is a very gross form of understanding the change. And this is how we do, you know, most of the time. When the summer is there, the sun is there, hot sun is there and all the time heat is there and suddenly we find that uh, the clouds are there and the water is pouring then we know that the summer has changed into winter but this is a very gross kind of manifestation of change and we are able to our 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 minds are very limited and our minds can grasp only very gross kind of changes so these gross changes are easy to understand and easy to notice so for example I always give the example of maybe flowering tree. So like Gulmohar tree is there. Now only in May month or June month, you will see flowers in the Gulmohar. And suddenly uh, we will notice there are lots of Gulmohar trees around. Rest of the year when the flowers are not there, we may not even notice that it is a Gulmohar. We may take it as a any tree 
or for that matter, this would be applicable to any tree which has got flowers. There are seasons when copper pots are there, yellow color flowers are there, and the trees are getting laden with so many flowers, and suddenly we start noticing them. Why we notice them? Because earlier the tree was very green and uh, flowers were not there, and suddenly they are full of flowers, so we start noticing them. But this is a very gross way of understanding the changes. What this sutra is trying to tell us, that there are three kinds of changes taking place. As we saw earlier, you know, uh, the scientists, what they do, whatever is visible phenomena, whatever is experienced by human mind, that is understood properly and they try to find out what is exactly making it possible for this manifestation or this kind of phenomena to be there. And that way they go on and trying to see some underlying facts, some underlying principles. And that way, when we look at uh, this uh, world, you will find that scientists have been able to give us uh, certain scientific principles. For example, new, the last time, the last uh, few classes back, I had quoted about Newton, Newton's three law of motion. Now, it is not that the law of motion did not exist before Newton. It was already there. It was working in the universe. Everything you throw up, it will come down. Everything falling from the top, it will come down. So that was also there. The law of gravity was also there. But then it, it came to be known as a law of gravity, universal law, after it was discussed by some. But the law was existing, but mind was not able to understand it. Same way, three laws of motion of... So we see lots of movement. You know, cars are moving, aeroplanes are moving, birds are flying, we are walking, people are moving here and there. Breeze is there, the trees are falling, or the flowers are falling, the leaves are falling. Lots of movements are going on. And these movements, we take them for granted because we are functioning at a very gross and practical level. So we take them for granted and we say that is enough. We know that changes are taking place. But now scientist is not like that. He will try to go deeper and try to understand what is the principle governing it. Same way these yogis were interested in understanding what is how the minds are changing? Last time we discussed, agar koi umid hi nahi hai ki humme koi badlaav aayega, to fir pratne hi kyun kare? Why should we put any effort if we if we think that there is no change going to take place? And why do we join yoga? Why 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 we why we are interested in yoga? Why we join yoga? Why we we are interested in discussing yoga philosophy? Why we are interested in discussing yoga technology? application of yoga, how to adopt it to daily life. Because somewhere there is an expectation that some changes will take place and those changes will be for our betterment, for our good. So we are looking forward to lots of changes taking place in our personality so that we can become better individual, we can become stronger, we can become more capable of dealing with life issues, life problems which are coming uh, every day in front of us, we are facing lots of things every day. So how to handle them? Somewhere we are expecting that yoga will improve all that. And that's why we are interested in yoga. So now yogis also are interested in knowing, you know, what happens exactly. So from that perspective, this sutra is telling as there are changes in the mind, so there are changes in everything in the universe, whatever you are capable of knowing. See, whatever human mind is capable of knowing, it is changing. Everything is changing. Uh, but And these changes have been termed as Dharma Parinama, Lakshana Parinama and Avastha Parinama. These are the three ch changes. So what is Dharma Parinama? Dharma Parinama is when the change takes place in the essential attributes of the object. So it's, ne it's, ne it's very, very you know prominent features as if change. Then we notice that. Like I gave the example of you meeting a friend and asking, are you put on weight? Because you are seeing some new attributes. So some change has taken place in the structure of that individual and in the personality of the, that. Now same can be said about a person who is always all the time angry. And you meet him and you find that of quite some time he is not angry. And he is not showing his usual behavior pattern. So you will utter this and you will say, oh, you have changed a lot. So he may ask, you know, in what way I have changed? 
then you will say no always all the time you were angry now i don't see that you are getting angry earlier you were thin now you have put on weight earlier you were very very heavy and now you have lost weight you have become thin so this is how we explain the changes now this this is the gross change this is dharma parinam so all all the time whenever things are changing their characteristics it is known as dharma parinam so whenever a new attribute comes it is known as dharma parinam the example would be uh, the when we look at the clay earth when we look at the earth in the powder form we don't see a pot in it but a pot maker a potter he can see the pot in that clay what he does that earthen earth which is there in the powder form he mixes some water in that he purifies it removes the stones and all the heavy material from it and maybe he will sieve it to make it very smooth and then he adds water to it and then it becomes a kind of malleable uh, you know uh, it, it it takes a shape and from clay now it is turning into a what is known as uh, you know a lump of clay so from earthen powder it has become a lump of clay now from earthen powder to become lump of clay this itself is a dharma parinam because what was the characteristics of earth powder it was powdery it cannot be held together even if we want to tie it even if we take that lot of powder in our hands and press them what will happen when we release everything will fall down but now look at the clay it has become a you know clot so water has been added now water has brought about this character characteristics change in the clay and now it is malleable it is it has acquired a form we can hold it it will not form it will not go into the powder powder form so the change of characteristic has taken place now what does potter do potter will put that you know on the wheel and give it a shape so that clay which is there in the form of clod it will be given a shape and that shape will be in the form of pot mitti mein se ghada bana raha hai ab ghada bana ke wo sirf that is not sufficient that he will make a pot after making a pot if he doesn't do anything further with it gradually the water content in the clay will dry up and that clay will again go into the powder form so what he does he will bake the pot so he will put the pot in the fire and now when a pot is ready which can be used to store grains or which can be used to store water that pot has now totally appeared as a new characteristics of clay see the clay has turned into pot so turning of clay into the pot is known as dharma parinam dharma parinam so this much we know and to this ex this extent we are very familiar with the changes and we say when 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 we talk about changes you know very obviously changes are always referred in terms of attributes in terms of essential attributes so when when, when we say that things have changed obviously the question will come what has changed so i say earlier it was like this and now it is like this earlier these characteristics were not there now they have manifested earlier this tree was only leaves now lots of flowers are there earlier it was clay it was powdery now it has turned into pot so this way we are able to discern a very gross kind of change and that gross kind of change is known as dharma parinam but then also we have to understand that human mind cannot only talk in terms of the characteristics so when you say that there is a change we are always referring to the change in terms of earlier it was so and now it is so and then sometimes we may talk of uh, season which is uh, about to come about to follow so what will be the state of a tree maybe in winter or in fall now now their flowers are blooming lot of greenery is there but very soon after 2 3 months after september september october it will be fall season and then what will happen to the tree things will change so we can talk about those attributes also 
because we have seen them earlier. So when we are talking about attributes which are about to follow, these will be the attributes which is related to future. So all the changes are seen in terms of past, present, and future. So when the changes are taking place at the grosser level, which are discernible, which immediately strike us, which our senses are able to understand, which our senses are able to discern, you know, senses are able to notice. Now, all those changes will be known as dharma parina. And when these changes are referred to as what? As past, present, future attributes. Then they are known as Lakshana Parina. Whenever any attribute is referred to as present, then always the question will come. If present is like this, then what was the past? And if present is like this and this was the past, then what will be the future? These are the questions which will obviously arise in the mind and this will be the changes will be which will be talked. So, <laughs> temporal changes are known as Lakshana Pali. Essential attributes, changes in essential attributes is known as Dharma Parinama. Temporal changes, when changes, changes are same, but they are now referred to as past, present and future. So when we are referring to the changes as past, present and future, then they are known as temporal characteristics or Lakshan Parinama. Parinama means change. Parinama is when one thing changes its attribute to another attribute, then that is known as Parinama. That is the change. That is how we can understand it. And then, now imagine a pot has come into existence. The clay was sieved and clay was mixed with water and it was it was malle malleable. So, with the, with the deft hands of a potter, the clay form a shape of pot and which was big. Now the pot is there. Pot has come into existence. So, now how long the pot will be holding the characteristics of being a pot? Very long time. Obviously, now example of the tree would be it is very you know very short lived. For example, I I give the example of gulmohar flowers or copper pot flowers. So copper pot flowers I have seen most of the trees they will have around twenty days they will have copper pots, uh, yellow flowers, and those flowers will fall down and very soon they will be substituted by copper pots. And the tree which was appearing to be very, very yellow all the time, now up to takes the form of uh, or color of copper because the copper pots are hanging from the tree. So this is a very short lived, within a month, two months this happens. But what about the pot? Pot is, if we don't disturb the pot, a pot, once it is baked, how long it is going to be there? Maybe 1,000 years. But again, after 1,000 years, pot is going to decay. Pot is going to change. So now this pot, the third parinama is known as avastha parinama. So avastha parinama is discussing or avastha parinama is to understand the present characteristics in terms of their avastha or state. So there are 10 pots and all the pots have been made at different times. So do you, do you think that our mind will be able to discern which pot is new, which pot is old? So in the present characteristics, whatever are present state characteristics, even in these characteristics, changes are taking place. So, the pot is every moment the structural change is taking place in the pot. The atomic structure is changing. It is weakening. It is becoming less and less powerful. So, that subtle change, human mind cannot discern. Lots of such subtle changes are there. We, we discern changes, we know changes only when there is a change of characteristics taking place and it becomes manifest. But every moment there are changes which are taking place and we are not aware of that. 
even our bodies are changing and we are not aware of that. See, that's why we are surprised when there is a wrinkle on the face. We are shocked. Remember, if you recall, what was your reaction when you saw the gray hair in your head? When you saw first hair in the head? What was the reaction in the mind? Or sometimes, suddenly we find that uh, some disease manifestation is taking place. What kind of shock? Now, you see, it is not that the disease will take place in a moment's time. Or the hair will become gray in a moment's time. Although there are recorded cases, they say that Shah Jahan, his, his hair became gray in one night. Historically, they talk about it. I don't know whether there's truth in that claim or not. So due to very strong shock and a uh, lot of drastic changes in his uh, biological sphere took place. But apart from that, you know, th that is a, just an example of extreme time. But apart from that, if we look at our daily life, our body is decaying every moment. Every moment our body is decaying. Every moment there are changes taking place in the external world. But then we are not aware of these changes. Only when suddenly some manifestation will come, some attribute will be manifested, we will realize, oh, things have changed. Suddenly person realizes, I am becoming old. Or I have lost this power. I am not able to do this. So, and this could be true of the good things also. We may, we may develop uh, certain skills. And suddenly we realize, oh, it was not there. Now I have this skill. So now these three changes are there. Avastha means changes in the state of being. Whatever characteristics are there, in those characteristics, when subtle changes are taking place, they are known as avastha parinam. And when those changes are being talked about with reference to time, three frame of time, that is past, present, and future, then that change is attributed or that change is called lakshan parinam, temporal changes. And the grossest of it, when total new characteristics are appearing, then that will be known as dharma parinama or change in the essential attributes of a thing. This, this much we have to understand. Now we will try to understand these three parinamas from the point of view of what happens in the chitta, what happens in our mind, what happens in our personality and how, how do we see these changes in our chitta, in our body and in our personality. So the example which has been taken in Sutra is that of Niruddha Chitta, Nirodha Parinama. But then see, Nirodha Parinama is something which many will not understand that what is Nirodha Parinama. So once we, if, or, or we may not be very clear about what is Nirodha Parinama. So we may not be able to really understand the intricacies and subtleness of it. So I'll change the example from Nirodha to something which we have experienced. Right? So, for example, let us take example of meditation. So, imagine, now, you know, we have to just recall, when did we start practicing meditation? And when we started practicing meditation, what, what happened when we tried it for the first time? Obviously, the teacher told us to take a particular physical position. And then teacher instructed us to focus on whatever be the object of meditation. It could be certain body part. It could be some kind of object. Very, very standard kind of, uh, you know, object is pay attention to your breath. And the instruction is don't allow other thoughts to come to your mind. Your mind should be totally focused on the breath. This was the suggestion, this was the instruction given by the teacher. So we started. Now I presume that most of you are practicing some kind of meditation. So from that presumption, I am describing this state. That initially when we do this, we don't have the ability to focus because our mind is too distracted, too distracted. So the moment we said the leg started paining, the back started paining, Thoughts were coming, so we were not able to focus on the breath or whatever desired object was. 
now this was the characteristics of our mind this was the attribute of our mind that our mind was not able to concentrate our mind was not able to focus on anything this was the attribute of the mind right so now we persisted we persisted for few months some people persisted for few years so now maybe few years have passed you have been practicing or i have been practicing meditation whatever i am saying is applicable to all of us if we have tried it then we will know that so now after persisting for many years and putting all the efforts in controlling the mind and focusing now what happens the moment we sit in meditation our mind becomes very calm our mind becomes very focused and in comparison to the first time when we did meditation or when we or we sat in meditation for for the first time and now there is a tremendous change which has taken place now the mind has got new capacity for concentration and very easily we can sit for 15 to 20 minutes without moving the body without feeling any discomfort and the mind remaining very focused and calm i'm sure you will be able to relate to it even if it is not 20 minutes say let us say 5 minutes let us say 3 minutes 10 minutes are we able to really remain focused for some time now because of the efforts if we are having this kind of uh, attributes now just a moment just a moment the computer bat battery was going low so i had to so now this is a new characteristics which is appearing in our mind that earlier i was not able to focus even for few seconds now i am able to sit quietly now i am able to men you know maintain that concentration for 10 minutes 15 minutes 20 minutes <laughs> so what I, what it what it means the earlier attribute of my mind was remaining disturbed remaining distracted not being able to concentrate even for a little while this was the essential attribute of my mind this was the essential characteristics of my mind and now as a result of practicing yoga the change has taken place in the mind and a new characteristics has appeared in the mind where the mind has acquired capacity to remain focused for relatively longer time than before than earlier so this kind of change will be known as dharma parinam now both dharma parinam now this is moving towards becoming more and more ekagrata more and more concentrated so concentration is the attribute of the mind which i have right now and the distraction was also an attribute of my mind which was earlier right so new characteristics has appeared now earlier i did not have the capacity to concentrate now i i have acquired the capacity to concentrate so that means the change has taken place in essential attribute of the mind that means the mind has undergone change the mind which had earlier no capacity for concentration and mind was all the time disturbed distracted running here and there weak now that mind has become strong it can focus it can concentrate and it can remain relatively calm tranquil peaceful for a little longer time now this is a new attribute so this new attribute in the mind is known as dharma parinam this is dharma parinam 
So like Dharma Parinama is taking place in everything else. Now this is in terms of mind. When we look at in, in terms of the objects, I gave you the example of pot. In pot, there was an attribute in the clay, in the earth. Earth was powder. So we put water into it. We brought about a change in the powdery earth. And then the, uh, you know, uh, the clay was made, which was malleable. From that, we, uh, we made a pot. So from clay to pot is a change of attribute, essential attribute. That means the, the, uh, sub, the substance which was forming the clay has changed into pot. The substance has not changed. See, you have to understand. Substance is not. Clay is clay. If we leave the pot just like that, maybe in 1,000 years, 2,000 years, again, it will go into the dirt form. Again, it will assume the original form. So the clay remains same. Same way our minds are under, undergoing change. The, my, earlier that mind was very disturbed. Now mind has acquired cap capacity for concentration. So this is known as dharma parinama. But now let us talk about this mind. And this can be applicable not only to the meditation, this can be applicable to asana also. So remember, you know, recall, whatever asana is difficult for you. For example, Padmasana is difficult. So when you first time learn Padmasana, what happened? Were you able to sit in Padmasana? Were you able to be comfortable in Padmasana? First time it was not so. So we decided that I want to master. Now, our, our body has got what kind of attribute at that time? Our mind is not capable of going into Padmasan. This is the attribute our body has. So every day we are persisting. Every day for some minutes we are practicing. Maybe after a month, two months, three months, four months, six months, a year, we acquire the capacity to sit in Padmasan for 10 minutes without disturbance, without any pain, without any discomfort. So what has happened? There's a change in the body which is taken, which has taken place. Our body has acquired new characteristics in the form of capacity for sitting in Padmasana for 10 minutes. So this is the change in characteristics of the body. Our body has undergone change. Characters ha characteristics has changed means what? It is one way of saying in language we say that, you know, because of this characteristic, I can make out that things have taken, things have changed. But the thing itself has changed. Our body itself has changed. It's a new attribute. It's a new characteristic, the body to sit in Padmasana for 10 minutes. But our body has undergone structural change where it has acquired new sanskaras, new characteristics where mind can, body can remain Padmasana for a long time. So now when we, when we talk about, you know, again, it is all in communication. It is all in language. So whenever new characteristics will come, some somebody say, oh, he has changed a lot. Earlier he was not able to focus. Now he's able to sit in meditation for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and he can have two, three sessions of meditation every day. This is a totally new kind of capacity a person has developed. So this is known as Dharma Parina. But you know, when we are talking about this particular characteristics, it will always be in terms of for understanding, it will always be terms in terms of past, present, future. Pehle ye nahi tha, abhi ye hai, aage ye aur bhi achha ho sakta hai, ya to agar humne karna chhod diya to wapas pehle jaise ho jayega. Anything can happen in future. Future ka to bol nahi sakte hain. If, if the kind of efforts we have put to come to a level where we are able to perform it, if we continue that, maybe we will in future we will be better than what we are today. So, this quality or this attribute will, will always always have to be understood in terms of past, present and future. That is temporal characteristics. That is Lakshan Parinam. But now again, a very important pertinent observation we have to make about our ability, <coughs> about understanding that characteristics. So I'll ask you a simple question. You, you have got the ability now, you have acquired the ability, you have acquired the characteristics, you have acquired the Dharma Parinama where you can sit in meditation for say 20 minutes. So when you are sitting in meditation for 20 minutes, is the state of mind or the state of concentration 
same in the first five minutes and in the last five minutes? Is the state same? So what, what is happening that time? When you sit in meditation, you know, initially for few minutes, it is very good concentration, very good concentration. But as the time goes, what happens? Slowly the changes are taking place. So earlier that state was very strong. Now it is becoming weak. Gradually it will become weak and when it will come to the level of capacity which we have acquired, if it is 20 minutes, when it will come closer to 20 minutes, then very soon distraction will start appearing. And our mind will go back to thinking, the meditation will stop. So during the period of meditation of 20 minutes also, there are changes taking place in the mind. These are known as very subtle changes which are taking place in the mind. Now these changes which are taking place during the meditation, are known as avastha parinam. This is the avastha. Because avastha me badla vara hai. Jo jo avastha pehle strong thi, wo abhi ho rahi hai. So uh, padmasan. Now we have acquired acquired capacity for sitting in padmasan for five minutes. So padmasan me baithe. So the padmasan will be very strong in the first initial two three minutes. After two three minutes, some changes will be taking place, and then again we may slightly develop little discomfort in the leg or maybe in the back. And after five minutes, we may have to come out of Padmasana. Why we are coming out of Padmasana? Why we are coming out of meditation? Because of the avastha parina. So these attributes are known as avastha. The three kinds of, and anything in universe is made up of or can be perceived as in terms of these, these three changes. Now here we have to come to, you know, something very, very important. This is so far we have understood about the objects. And now we are venturing to another area that all these changes are taking place in the same body-mind complex. Our chit is one chit, which is also Nirod Parinam, which is also Samadhi Parinam, which is also Ekagrata Parinam. Before, there was no Ekagrata. There was no Ekagrata. The mind was running away. फिर हम लोगों ने विचार करके एफर्ट्स के द्वारा अभ्यास के द्वारा वैराग्य के द्वारा वी वी ट्रेंड अवर माइंड विद द हेल्प ऑफ कंटिन्यूअस प्रैक्टिस एंड यू नो लीविंग असाइड एवरीथिंग एल्स अदर इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग्स वी यू नो रिजेक्टेड एंड वी वेंट ऑन फोकसिंग पुटिंग एफर्ट्स इन फोकसिंग द माइंड एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ दैट वॉट हैपन द माइंड एक्वायर द एबिलिटी टू बिकम वन पॉइंटेड सो वी वी अटेंड एकाग्रता and that ekagrata brought about lot of changes at the subconscious level lots of new sanskaras were created new impressions were gathered by the body and mind in our body also every cell of the body has got its own memory store every cell of us has got memory store and cell will tend to act according to that memory and we can change we can bring new memories to the cells so the cells also start behaving in a totally different manner our mind also, our nervous system also can undergo a lot of change. So initially the change comes in the form of mind becoming focused, ekagrata parinama, then it goes into samadhi, that is known as samadhi parinama. So in samadhi parinama, the conscious mind is also changing and subconscious mind is also changing. And then it goes to, into the nirodha parinama, where the change is taking place, not in the cognition, but in the sanskara level, at the subconscious level. This we have discussed earlier. So now it is the same chitta in this, in which this, these changes are taking place. So substratum is, now you know why I'm saying this because a lot of philosophical questions or a lot of philosophical uh, you know, positions are being taken by these statements, which we may not be aware because we are not concerned with those, that deep philosophy. But by taking this position, Sankhya and Yoga are trying to explain or trying to refute the contention of other philosophies so what, what yoga says, the, uh, the chitta remains same. It is not that the new chitta come into existence every moment. It is the same chitta in which ekagrata parinam is taking place, then samadhi parinam is taking place, then nirodha parinam is taking place. So when we look at the world, the world also appears to be taking newer forms and we think that new things are coming, new things are coming into existence. 
So like a scientist would see that there are millions of objects, millions of objects. From what they are made, so a chemistry scholar would say, Are pura jobi rako karodo jo object dikai de rain. All the millions and millions of objects which you are seeing in the world, they are nothing but they are elements. So there are only 110, 12 elements which are constituting the world. Nothing else. So everything you see is the composition of elements in different proportions. That is what chemistry will tell us. And then if we look at the physics, what physics will tell us? Physics will tell us that whatever you see, it is nothing but energy. Even the most uh, dense matter which you are handling, even your body, even the stones, even the uh, steel and iron, whatever solid objects you are holding and dealing with, they are nothing but energy. That is what physics will say. So that is why last time we were talking about this Einstein's example, E is equal to mc square. So energy, mass, space, time, these are the essential attributes of universe. So entire universe, the variety, the innumerable variety of objects in the world can be reduced to only three or four simple terms. What are those simple terms? Energy, mass, space, time. So this is the physics, the reality of the physics about the universe. So what does yoga say? Like Physics is reducing everything to these four, three, three, four factors. Chemistry is reducing it to element now. Now they are going deeper. Now they are trying to find out a very common, super, you know, small structure, which is at the base of every kind of object in the universe. So a lot of experiments are going on. And a few years back, we came across this news, newspaper report, boss element, boss you know, that subatomic particle was found, which was termed as boss. He's the boss because he's there in everything. So still there, that experiment is going on in chemistry and physics that science is still trying to find out what is the ultimate structure which constitutes everything in the universe. Now, according to yoga, so what scientists are trying to do is they are trying to find a substratum. They are trying to find the common ground on which every structure of the world is made. So yoga says every structure of the world according to yoga and Sankhya is made up of three gunas. Sattva, Rajas and Tamas. This Sattva, Rajas and Tamas, they have got the capacity to go on changing and creating new manifestations. But at the same time, we have to understand that behind every manifestation, there is Sattva, Rajas, Tamas. So if we go according to Sankhya and yoga, there is nothing in this universe which is not made up of three gunas. So be it our thought, be it our mind, be it our body, be it any object, be it a book or this computer, everything is made up of three gunas. And very easily an expert of yoga can tell you that where, where these gunas are there. Where is sattva, where is rajas, where is tamas. So now yogis are seeing everything in terms of gunas. This way they are able to go to the subtlest understanding to the knowledge you know, it will be like uh, when we are talking about substratum, at uh, we'll, we'll understand it from a very, very practical example. Now, you see, some of you ladies might be wearing some gold jewelry right now. Right? This gold jewelry could be of a different kind. It could be a ring. It could be a necklace. It could be a earring. Or it could be some kind of bracelet. It could be some kind of... Uh, Bangle. So now you see all these are made up of gold. But when we look at the ring, do we say that uh, this is gold? We don't say this is gold. We say it is a ring. And when we look at the bangle, we say it is a bangle. When we look at the necklace, we say it is a necklace. But when we go, when we think deeply about it, then we will find that you know the what is the common denominator of, of all this jewelry? They are all made up of gold. So has gold really changed into something else when it becomes bangle? If a gold bangle is there, can we say that gold bangle is made up of something else than the gold? We cannot say that. 
it is made up of gold only so there is some other kind of ornament which is made from the gold we will name that ornament as whatever it is but then uh, we cannot say that it is not made up of gold because essentially it is made up of gold but we don't say it is gold we say it is necklace we say it is bangle we say it is a ring but essentially the gold remains common denominator so gold is the substratum for all the manifested objects which are created from the gold and they assume different norm, names they assume different forms they have got different uses they have got different characteristics even totally different characteristics gold in the form of maybe a you know brick gold brick or gold coin or maybe you know any uh, gold in the raw form so in biscuit form and the gold taking the form of bangle so where are the dharma lakshana avastha parinama in gold when we talk about the gold gold is the substratum and gold has got certain dharma certain characteristics certain attributes what are the attributes of gold that first is it is malleable it is very precious it is rarely available and it is very bright and it doesn't easily gets contaminated it remains stable for a long time and it has got a certain malleability now these are the characteristics of gold so the gold will be known as dharmi and the malleability its colors its structure its atomic structure so even in talking in terms of chemistry gold has got atomic weight which no other metal has so that particular metallic weight which is there in the gold that is a very very specific characteristics of gold so that will be known as lakshan parinam so all the attributes of gold will be lakshan parinam will, will will be dharma parinam and from that dharma parinama we can make bangle from gold we can make bangle we can make a ring we can make necklace that will be the lakshan parinam because earlier which was what what earlier what was there earlier only gold was there and gold had got certain features it had got certain characteristics so using those characteristics we converted gold into a bangle or into an ornament so now new attribute has come into existence in the gold so that new attribute in the form of ring bangle will be known lakshan parinam and how do we refer to it earlier it was a piece of gold now it is a bangle so earlier in past it was gold now it is a bangle but the gold is same gold is there in the uh, you know earlier also and gold is now now how long that ring will be there as long as the structure is maintained the the uh, temporal characteristics will remain same but in gold also subtle changes are taking place at the st atomic structure so those subtle changes which are taking place in the gold at atomic structure they will be known as avastha parinam so everything in this universe is undergoing changes and we normally understand them with the help of these three terms dharma lakshan avastha parinama but behind all that there is only one reality that everything is made up of three gunas and these gunas only are undergoing changes so gunas are known as substratum substratum means dharmi gunas is the dharmi and all that changes which are taking place in gunas they are nothing but dharma lakshana and avastha parinama and in these again temporal lakshan parinama or avastha parinama are very very superficial that the real thing is the dharma parinama because we notice only dharma parinama we normally don't notice the lakshana avastha parinama although they are important so in case of a yogi he is able to see these changes and he is able to look at the essence of things ultimately everything is reduced to prakriti and purusha all that is manifest in the world our body our minds everything is made up of three gunas and this is these three gunas are all the time changing what is not changing there is one thing which is not changing in our personality that is our consciousness that consciousness is termed as purusha so this world is made up of two things purusha and prakriti all the changes are in the prakriti when a yogi realizes that all the changes are taking place in the prakriti he is not bothered about it he is not concerned about it he accepts it 
as against that in not normal course of life, we are all the time worried about the changes. I'm getting old, I'm becoming weaker, I'm losing money, I've become poor. So we are we are concerned, you know, things are changing. The global warming is taking place, the world is the rains are coming, lots of deaths are taking place, destruction is taking place. These changes are all the time going on and they bother us a lot. But a person who's able to see that ultimately Prakriti is all the time changing. You know, it's a cyclic process and it is going on. It is not that, uh, you know, things have remained same for the same two, moment, two moments. Things have not remained same for two moments. Every moment things are changing. For good or for worse. So there has to be a certain attitude towards this change. And Yogi has this attitude that he is not bothered about the change because he can hold on to the non-changing entity, that is Purusha. So one of the purpose of yoga is to be able to understand the true nature of universe, true nature of body-mind, and true nature of this consciousness which we have, through which we are getting related to the world. So ability to be able to go into the essence of things and understand their true nature is what is involved here. And this is this sutra also has to be understood because now subsequently lots of siddhis will be talked about. So a mind which can think at such subtle level where it can understand the smallest change, changes taking place at atomic, atomic structure, what kind of mind that is? What kind of power that mind will have? So all the power, all the siddhis are coming from this ability as a practice of yoga, one develops these special abilities where it can, mind can understand things. And understanding means acquiring full knowledge. Knowledge will also sometimes mean mastery. When we have knowledge of certain things, we gain mastery over them. That is the contention. <clears throat> so this way, this sutra has, it is very difficult sutra, very technical sutra. But then we have to understand that uh, before understand going into the area of siddhis and how siddhis are taking place, or whatever we are looking at manifestations, you know, things appear and we get caught into them. We are we get blinded by the manifestations. We get blinded by the attributes without realizing that all this is going to change. Everything is changing. Even our bodies and our minds are all, all the time changing. One day, they may be just totally different from what they are now. So once this kind of awareness is there, a lot of uh, stability comes, a study, steadiness comes in the mind. And one is able to take uh, everything in his stride. That is very important. And then, you see, one of the weaknesses mind suffers from is, although everything is changing, but our mind is not able to accept change. This is the worst part. This is the worst personality trait we all have. We are all the time afraid of changes. If, we, if the understanding is very clear that everything is going to be changed, and nobody can stop it. Because that's how Prakriti is. Nobody can stop it. If, you know, one can even say that even God would not stop it. Because Prakriti is like Prakriti will change in the world. Parivartan is the name of the world. Parivartan is the quality of the world. And Parivartan will be the same in the world. That's why we can't pick any other thing. Then we can keep it still. So if we have some advantage over others, we want to hold on to it. If we are strong, we want to hold on to the strength. If we have any kind of, you know, attachment, we want to hold on to that. Or if there is a little change, hai, toh, we feel threatened. We, 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 we feel lost. And then we feel very disturbed. Our minds undergo a lot of disturbance and all negative kind of emotions arise in our mind. Even for that matter, even death. Somebody dying. That is also a part of change. And it is expected. It is expected. Nothing new is happening. When somebody dies, it is not that the calamity has taken place or something new has happened. It is, it is going the process is going on. The moment we were born, the, it was ensured that we are going to die. But we are not willing to accept it. So that is why a very strong klesha comes and take charge, takes charge of our mind. That klesha is known as abhinivesh. You see, all the fears which we experience in our day-to-day -day life, all the fears which are there in our mind, aisa ho jayega, aisa ho jayega, all apprehensions, all anxieties, they have got their origin in this non-acceptance of the fact of change. If we can accept that everything is going to change, then okay, everything is changing. So let me, I have to adapt to the change. I have to accept the change. If we deny the change, then we are always suffering and we are at loss. All the pain comes. 
देन वी आर नॉट एबल टू एक्सेप्ट द चेंजेस अभी कोरोना के टाइम में इतना चेंज आ गया दोज हु आर नॉट एबल टू एक्सेप्ट दे सफर्ड अ लॉट एंड दोज हु सेड ओके दिस इज द टाइम वी शुड नॉट गो आउट लेट इज वेट फॉर टाइम लेट इज वेट एंड दोज हु आर अवेयर दैट दिस विल ऑल्सो चेंज समे दे वर वाइज एंड दे कुड होल्ड ऑन सो इवन इन कैलामिटी थिंग्स आर यू नो थिंग्स आर चेंजिंग कोई दुख हो या कोई सुख हो वो पूरे समय तक हमेशा रहने वाला नहीं है दुख भी है तो बदल जाएगा सुख भी है तो बदल जाएगा तो ऑल दीज इशूज आर इन्वॉल्व विद दिस सूत्र एंड ऑल दो इट इज वेरी टेक्निकल सूत्र एंड यू नो देर आर वेरी बिग साइंटिफिक थियरीज इन्वॉल्व हियर दिस सूत्र इज स्पेसिफिकली डीलिंग विद वॉट इज नोन इन फिजिक्स एज लॉ ऑफ कंजर्वेशन ऑफ एनर्जी scientists were able to give us that principle of law of conservation of energy maybe few hundred years back but look at sankhya and yoga thousands of year the sutra is itself 2500 years old the sutra which we are reading this is 2500 years back and this sutra is talking about law of conservation of energy ye jo bhi dharm parinam avastha parinam ye ho raha hai ye sab ek hi matter mein ho raha hai nothing goes out of existence it is only changing form धर्मी का धर्म बदलते रहता है धर्मी वही रहता है एसेंशियल सब्सट्रेटम्स रिमेन सेम ओनली दैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स गो ऑन चेंजिंग दैट इज वॉट फिजिक्स इज एनर्जी कैन नॉट बी डिस्ट्रॉयड वंस अ थिंग्स इन थिंग इज इन एक्सिस्टेंस इट कैन नॉट बी डिस्ट्रॉयड एट द मोस्ट इट विल चेंज इट्स फॉर्म तो मैं मैग्नेटिक एनर्जी को इलेक्ट्रिक एनर्जी में कन्वर्ट करो एनर्जी को और कई एनर्जी में कन्वर्जन इज पॉसिबल अलग अलग एट्रीब्यूट आ सकती है अलग अलग धर्म हो सकता है मैग्नेट में अलग धर्म है और इलेक्ट्रिसिटी जो हमको लाइट देती है उसमें अलग धर्म है बट बिहाइंड देम द एसेंशियल एनर्जी थिंग इज से दे आर ओनली चेंजिंग द फॉर्म सो दैट इज नोन एज लॉ ऑफ कंजर्वेशन ऑफ एनर्जी इन फिजिक्स सो साइंटिस्ट से दैट इन यूनिवर्स ये इन यूनिवर्स में से हम कुछ घटा भी नहीं सकते इसमें कुछ डाल भी नहीं सकते यूनिवर्स जैसा है वैसा ही रहने वाला इसमें जो चीज जैसी है वो वैसी ही रहने वाली है सिर्फ एक ही बात है कि वो बदलते रहे उसमें परिवर्तन आता रहेगा क्योंकि परिवर्तन ही संसार का नियम है सो दिस चेंजफुलनेस इज दी ओनली चेंजलेस फीचर इन दिस यूनिवर्स सो दिस इज वॉट दिस सूत्र सो लॉट ऑफ डीपर इम्प्लीकेशन आर ऑल्सो देर बट देन वॉट वॉट इज वॉट शुड बी अवर टेक एट द प्रैक्टिकल लेवल इज दैट वी शुड बी विलिंग टू एक्सेप्ट चेंजेस all around us as they are taking place instead of resisting because when we are resisting and denying we are actually fighting with the truth we are going against the truth we are going against the facts and that will make us miserable that is what means long sutra niranjan ye jo bolte hain ki sara jo bhi jaise aapne bola ki sattva rajas tamas तो ऐसा बोलते हैं पृथ्वी जल अग्नि वायु आकाश ये भी लाइक यू नो दीज आर द फाइव थिंग्स व्हिच लाइक एवरीथिंग इज मेड अप ऑफ लिटिल दिस एंड दैट एंड तो व्हाट हैव यू टू से अबाउट दिस सी इवन दोस आर मेड अप ऑफ थ्री गुणा सो व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट पंच महाभूतास नाउ यू सी टिल द पंच महाभूतास व्हेन द क्रिएशन स्टार्ट फ्रॉम प्रकृति टू पंच महाभूतास what is taking place what change is taking place that tatvas are new tatvas are coming into existence till the earth element new tatvas are coming so 25 tat 24 tatvas have been recognized in sankhya so prakriti is there purush is there prakriti was mahat comes from mahat ahankar comes then panch tanmatra comes then panch mahabhutas and on the subjective side uh, from ahankar the manas comes from gyan then gyanendriyas are there karmendriyas are there so these 25 are known as the basis or the basic uh, you know tatvas after that whatever changes are taking place those changes are taking place within the bhutas so the bhutas are continuously changing so earth will be there in anything you handle in the universe it will it will have five bhutas it will have earth water fire akash and vayu element in it not no object is devoid of these five and then when you look at any object although these five will be present you will be also able to see at the certain level they will be having three gunas so even if it is made up of earth element predominantly they will have three gunas even the fire itself which is predominant 
element itself or bhuta itself when we look at the fire the fire, agni tattva usme jyada hai lekin usme agni tattva mein bhi earth element is also there water element is also there vayu element is also there akash element is also there. and it may have rajas element predominant but gunas will be there so even these five guna five bhutas they are nothing but they are manifestation of three gunas that is what sankhya would say that is what yoga would say so even bhagavad gita mein hai krishna arjun ko bolta hai jo bhi zameen zameen se leke aasman tak aur jo swarg se leke pure zameen tak jo kuch bhi hai is universe mein aisa kuch bhi nahi hai jo in teen gunon ke siwa bana hua ho सब चीजें तीन गुणों से बनी हुई सिर्फ हमारी जो एक चेतना है हमारी जो जिसको पुरुष कहते हैं या जिसको आत्मा कहते हैं वो आत्मा जो है वो तीन गुणों से रहित है तीन गुणों से अतीत है बाकी सब कुछ यूनिवर्स में तीन गुणों से ही बना हुआ है ये तीन गुणों के ये पंच महाभूत भी जो है वो तीनों गुणों से बने हुए So we stop here. Or if there are any pertinent questions, anything. Any questions from anyone? No. So we leave it here. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much, you, sir.